Okay, well, let's take a look at this for a moment. I got myself here a wave tank, and up in the top middle of this screen, I have uh, a wave maker. And so if I turn it on, I'm going to see the waves coming out of that one point on and on and on and on, 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 like that. Now, let's talk about that for a moment. I want to talk about diffraction. So let's make it clear what I'm trying to talk about here. First, let's look at what we were talking about. We had a source, and coming off of it were the waves. Now, I'm, I'm showing it actually goes in all directions like that, but I'm only showing it coming down at the bottom like this. And remember, this is a, coming a periodic wave, so my wavelength is constant, which means the distance between each of these wave peaks. So in other words, I was going to say this distance here between these two wave peaks is my wavelength, and it's the same. I know I'm not drawing it very well, but I got a wavelength here and another wavelength here, and they're all the same. They're all the same. They're heading out, um, out like this in all directions, going that way, that way, that way. And it's all going at the same speed in all directions. Same speed, V. So, I have the same frequency. I have the same wavelength. It's headed out in all directions. So, if I drew my wave ray, I would have to actually draw a bunch of them because there's some of the wave is going this way, some of the wave is going that way, there's a wave going this way, there's actually a wave going in all directions here, all directions. But here's the situation I want to talk about. Now, what's going to happen is that this wave then uh, spreads out, like so, and then at a certain point, what I want to talk about is what happens, what happens if it comes across a wall. Now, there's a few different situations I want to talk about, but the first one I want to talk about is what if uh, there was a big wall and then there was a very, very small hole. So this is this whole thing here is a big wall like that, and the wave comes and it hits it. What is going to happen? So that's what I want you to ask yourselves. Maybe even pause the video and ask yourself, okay, do I know the answer? Maybe even draw it. Draw what's going to happen. Okay. So, I'll give you a moment. Go ahead. Think about it. And now I'm going to go back to my wave tank. So here's my wave tank. But um, what's neat about this program is that I am able to uh, build stuff on it. So here what I'm, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw right here. You can see it. Here's one wall. Now, I'm not drawing it beautifully. I'm sorry. It's not the best wall, but it's a wall. It's a wall. And uh, the way this thing works is that uh, as long as I draw a line, it's considered to be um, one big thing. So I don't need to fill this in. It's This is a line. This is a boundary. Nothing's going to go through it. But I got a little tiny hole right there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to let this thing go, and we're going to see what happens. So let's take a look. Here we go. So it hits. Now... You can see immediately over here, notice there's little dark edges. So what's happening here? Of course, the wave is reflecting. So I should get some of the wave reflecting. And oh, it looks like the wave's going to come through. So if I, I go a little bit more, oh, the wave is managing to get through the hole. Now the question is, is what is the wave going to look like on the other side? So here we go. Let's watch. Wouldn't you know? So let's take a look at what we're talking about here. Okay, on the other side, I've got lots of wave interference. And that's because I have the one wave coming this way and the other wave coming back. So let's just go back to uh, what I was drawing before. So on this side, this side, what happens here? I'm going to draw this in pink. But uh, let's see, my waves keep coming out and they're going to hit the wall. There we go. So they're going to kind of hit the wall here. But then... Uh, the wave will bounce back. So I'm going to have a wave kind of coming back like that at the same wavelength. Remember, this is a wave coming back and probably like that and that. So every, and, and everywhere where this, this wave meets the other wave coming, like for example here, notice I have two wave peaks hitting, which means this should be the same as having uh, one wave peak happening and then the other wave peak 
happening at the same place. And I should get a third wave that looks like uh, this. It's going to be twice as big. And of course, some places, I'm going to, for example, I'm going to have uh, wave troughs, which would be right in between here, right in between here. Because I have to remember, I'm only showing wave peaks. So what I got, let's see. So if you look on the left, um, picture the wave. Now the blue wave is coming this wave. So let's just say maybe it's headed like that. But then it reflects, so it's going to bounce like that off of the wall. But of course, what's going to happen is I'm going to have places where here and here, that's like two troughs are hitting each other. So what, what, does that, what does that look like? Well, that's sort of like where I've got this, and then I've got blue wave is also doing that. And so what am I going to get? I'm going to get something that's kind of twice as low, twice as dark. It's like a super trough. But then I've got I've got a few other weird places where I've got, for example, uh, right here, if you look right there, I've got a trough and a peak. So if you think back on what we said about that, that would be a situation where I would have the peak hitting. What would it hit? It would hit a trough. And then what am I left with in the middle? Oh, well, exactly what you think. It's going to cancel out. So I'm going to have all sorts of different patterns. And if, and if you go back and look at that, Sure I do. I've got all sorts of strange things happening. Some place, if you look here, it's even brighter uh, than the original wave. So that's where I'm getting double the double the peak. And, and here, this is, right here is very black. It's very darker than what I had originally. So I'm getting kind of a combination of the waves happening. Now that's all interesting. And that's stuff you already know. You already know that stuff. But what you probably are finding is interesting is that when the wave comes through, what happens? I see this happening. It's almost like the wave has started being built again from one point in the middle there. Whoops, didn't draw that one very well. I'm sorry about that. I'm not really much of an artist today. Well, let's think about that. The wave was coming down like what? Let's draw the wave ray. It was coming down like that. What we did see happen is that the wave then, when it came around, it actually came around the corner. Both sides came around the corner. It's like it turned over around the corner. And so this action of a wave, when it hits an obstacle and comes around the corner, is what we call diffraction. This is diffraction. So the act of a wave going around the corner of an obstacle. So when we look at this, and we're just, let's let that go for a little while there, you can see the wave is just having a wonderful time, kind of comes right around the corner and turns, it turns, it changes its direction. It's also going straight, and it's obviously not as strong over here. And so what we want to do now is we want to figure out, okay, if that's diffraction, what are the rules? Now, the rules are pretty simple. The rules are pretty simple, but I think we can learn them pretty fast. What we want to do is we want to look if there's anything that's going to happen due to, let's say, the wavelength. Does the wavelength affect anything? And also the size of the obstacle, the, the object in the way, the, ob the object that is blocking the path of the wave. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn the rules for both of these things. Let's do them real quick right now. So here I got a, um, let's just stop that for a second. I've got a wave coming down. It's about to hit an obstacle and it's coming at a certain wavelength. And so we can see that what happens, yep, the wave bends around the corner like that. Bends around the corner. Now, what happens if I change the wavelength? Now let's take a look. So take a good look at that. Let's see what that looks like. So got it. it comes around, but you can also see that it's, it's not as strong as it was before. So this is not as strong, but let's now try to see what happens if we change the wavelength. So here's my giant wave coming. Now, now it's a, yep, that's, that's a big wave. That's a big wave. So what's going to happen when it comes to the other side of this obstacle? Okay, so it does reflect there. We see it reflecting. Now, what you want to look at is what happens around here. At what point do you start seeing the wave look normal again? 
And if you look, you got well, it's almost the normal towards the end there. It's actually you don't it doesn't look the same anymore. Actually, this looks crazy to be honest. Really bizarre pattern. So let's just go back here. So what am I saying? What am I trying to say? Well, we have two situations. So let's 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 draw them real quick. So what we're saying here is that if I have a smaller, let's just write this right, smaller wavelength, I get more or less. Now let's just think about that. Diffraction means it's going to come over and join its friend on the other side. And it looks like, there, if you look at this, there's kind of this area where, well, they haven't joined yet, and it doesn't look like the original wave. So there's actually less diffraction happening here. But with a large wavelength, it's almost as if, you can almost think about it this way, it's as if the obstacle wasn't even there. It's all, it doesn't influence the thing as much because the diffraction happens almost immediately to the point where the wave afterwards looks the same. So more, or I shouldn't say more here, I'll write this, larger, larger wavelength means more diffraction. Remember what we're looking for. We're trying to say, what does the part after look like compared to what happened before. The wave before and the wave after. Do they look the same? Well, it looks the same by the point here, but the large wavelength, right? The large wavelength, like say around on this line, this line, looks pretty much the same by this point. It doesn't actually get influenced very much. Okay, so that's wavelength. Now, what about the size of the obstacle? We'll give a thought for a moment before I look at it again, but uh, let's take a look at that now on the... Uh, on the wave generator. So here's this wave. It's coming around a fairly large obstacle. And if you look at it, well, it takes a little while. They start to join up. They're kind of mixing with each other. And almost at the bottom, almost at the bottom, do we start to see something that looks pretty much like the wave before it hit that obstacle. But it hasn't even totally joined up. We still have a lot of interference. There's, It's definitely not looking like the original wave there. So got a there's still a lot of areas that has not got any diffraction in the middle the middle I don't even know what's going on in the middle there so now let's change that we're gonna look at what happens if we make the obstacle a lot smaller so here's the waves approaching a very small obstacle let's see what happens now comes through slips back on and then pretty almost right afterwards it doesn't really seem to end, and it's just what you would think would happen the obstacle just doesn't influence the wave that much. It's, it may, you see a little diffraction happening, but the diffraction almost happens so much, so quickly, that it takes over the whole thing and you're back to your original wave, which means you're getting a lot of diffraction there. A lot of diffraction. Once again, remember what we're looking at. We're looking at the wave and the way it looks before it hits the obstacle, and what does the wave look like after it hits the obstacle. So if the wave looks close to the same as what it did at the beginning, you have a lot of diffraction happening. That's the only way you're going to get that. Okay, so let's take a look at that. What do we got here? We've got a large, large obstacle. Really, remember, when we're talking about a large obstacle, we mean is it wide or is it not so wide? So we're talking about the width of the obstacle. But here you can see this whole area here, it still hasn't gone back the way it used to look, so I have less diffraction. Diffraction. But with a small obstacle, make sure you put this in your notes, by the way, guys. I expect to see this in your notes. Small obstacle, look at that, almost all the way through. It immediately turns back to the original wave. It has more diffraction, so I would call this more... Oh, I didn't spell that very good. It's more diffraction. So we have 10 minutes. I'm going to show you something on the wave generator, and you tell me what's going to happen. Okay, here we go. I got waves coming down. They're about to hit these borders. Okay, what's going to happen?